Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Adams. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and then press the little bell button right next to it. That way you're notified every time I put up a new video. So in this video, I decided to share some of my must haves for my third trimester of pregnancy, specifically things that are helping me stay really healthy. I'm actually sleeping super well. Um, I'm gonna share some things that I use to manage pain and discomfort and just some other health related things. And if you're following me and you're not pregnant, I encourage you to stick around at least for this first half of the video because a lot of these things I actually had before I was even pregnant and I'll be using long after I'm pregnant. So you'll still probably get something good out of this video even if you're not pregnant and watching. So I'll go over some of those things first, knowing that some of you aren't pregnant. And again, for those of you that are pregnant wanting this list of items, you're gonna love these first couple of items because they are, again, useful for even when you're not pregnant. Pregnancy can be so expensive, just the things that you're buying for yourself, like maternity clothes, so it's nice that these things are gonna last you long after pregnancy. So my first recommendation is this heat wrap. And it's a very specific heat wrap. Most of you probably don't know, but I was a massage therapist for over 10 years. So I use these all the time on my clients and I sold them in my office because I just love them so much. I'm just gonna go over a couple of quick benefits. Number one, it's a moist heat versus like a dry heat where you would have like a, a heating pad that you would plug in to the wall. So it's gonna penetrate deeper into your muscles. This is so great. Even in the beginning of your pregnancy, I was having a lot of cramping and bloating. Your doctor will probably tell you not to use hot tubs or take super hot baths, um, but my doctor okayed this. You're not raising your core temperature by using a heating pad. So I would just make this slightly warm and put it on my stomach when I felt super crampy and bloating in the beginning of this pregnancy. And now I have so much tightness in my lower back, especially. So wrapping this around my low back when I'm sitting in a chair or laying on a couch. And also what I love about this is the size of it because it fits around any body part. I have a lot of like neck and jaw pain. And again, this started like well before pregnancy. So that was usually my go-to use for this. I would just wrap it and it would get like all up in these neck muscles. I could even put it on my jaw, or if I was having like an issue on my shoulder blade, I could actually just drop it down over one shoulder. So again, whether you're pregnant or not, this is definitely a tool that you'll want to have to help you manage some aches and pains. Um, but when we're pregnant, there's so little that we can do. I've been stretching, and when it comes to like those tight hips and low back and things like that, um, this moist tea pad really seems to help. Everything that I'm gonna be talking about today, I'm gonna to be linking up in the description box below so you can find exactly the item that I'm talking about. And it's an affiliate link, so it helps you find it quicker, it helps me out. So the second thing to help manage pain and discomfort is this massage gun. And I don't know if it has a different name. I actually bought it for my husband Clark for Christmas, but I call it a massage gun because that's what it looks like. And it comes with all these different like attachments to give you different sensations or like to get in deeper to the muscles or maybe a little less if it's on a really tender area. So basically you just charge this thing up and pop the attachment that you want in and then there's a power button on the bottom and then there's three different settings, high, medium, and low. I'm just gonna turn it on, it might be a little noisy. I mean, it's a little noisy but Clark actually uses it while we're watching TV and that's probably when I use it too. Again, it's just really nice and convenient because you can just literally be sitting there on the couch while you're relaxing and you're just, you know, working on whatever area that you want. So for me or some of the pregnant women watching this, again, I can't quite get it to my low back, but I can hand it to Clark and he can do it for me. Or I will show you, I really love it in my, like in my hip joint area. Just stand up real quick. Oh, look at that bump. So cute. So like right in my hip joint, I'll just kind of really work that area really well. I've also been having some sciatic pain that kind of runs through my glute here. So I can easily still reach that. Um, it also feels really good on your feet too. So if you're having some swelling in there, doing uh, maybe the lighter attachment on low, 
just kind of working through the arch of my feet and my ankles. It helps kind of move some of that fluid out. I'm unfortunately not having too much swelling this time. I did with Davin, but that's definitely great for your feet too. I have one more thing for pain management when it comes to pregnancy. So this is really just for pregnant people. Um, but I have a couple of other tools in here that is great for anybody else. So again, if you're not pregnant and watching, just hang in there for a second. So this is my third thing for third trimester. It is a like belly wrap back support band. Again, I'll link it all up because I'm not exactly sure the names. It actually comes in three pieces. The third piece I'll show you in a picture or something is really not very useful. Um, but I'm going to put it on and then I'll explain exactly like what I'm feeling. So when I first saw these things, I thought that it really was just to like lift your stomach and maybe like take off some of like the weight of your stomach, which I guess it does do that. But what I really love about it most is the pressure around my hips and my low back. That's why I use it. So what you do, and what's nice too is um, a lot of pregnancy clothing has this thing where like it goes pretty far up your stomach. So if I'm like, Wearing it while I'm going out and about, I'll actually put it on this layer of clothing so that I can cover it up with my shirt. But if I'm just at home, I'll just put it over my shirt because I don't care. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So this thing, it has um, a little bit of a curve to it. And you wrap it from hip to hip. And then this band comes all the way around. And you won't feel a lot of support with this one but it kind of gets it started. And I wrap this band literally underneath my belly all the way back to the other hip. And then this is the one that really does the magic. Again, same thing, you can kind of see it has a little bit of a curve to it. So it literally is gonna come down. This is like my low back, my what's called your sacrum, and then my tailbone. And that's all where I feel like the tightness and discomfort. So I'm gonna pull this part as tight as possible. I pull this one across as tight as possible. Oh, it feels so good. Like instantly I'm starting to have this compression in my hips. I'm feeling some compression in, in my back here. And I'm feeling a little bit of support in my stomach too. Now I have not labored and I won't labor. Um, but from the women that I've talked to that have gone through labor, if they had a partner in the room um, that was actually helping them like a midwife or their husband, when they would massage or like apply pressure in those two areas that I just mentioned, I know that that helped them a lot. So I don't know if you can wear this going through labor, but definitely just as I go up, up, out and about throughout this third trimester, there are times that I don't need it, um, but especially like if I'm having Rex and Hicks or yeah, just any time that I'm feeling like my, my back or my hips are really bothering me, I'll put this baby on. So it's definitely a must have. Okay, now let's switch to sleeping. So sleeping for pregnant women is not so easy physically. We're so uncomfortable. Things are changing in our body so much. The first thing that I have for sleeping, again, is good for anybody really, which is this sound machine. It literally is just a fan. You can find some of them that make recorded sounds. So it will be like white noise or ocean or thunder. I don't prefer those. They actually sound artificial to me. This one, when you plug it in, it actually makes like a whooshing white noise sound. I again have been using this for years. I had it in my massage practice. It helps drown out noise. So if you're a really light sleeper and any sound wakes you up, this is really great to have in your room. I really like it for myself because sometimes, especially in this third trimester, I'm going through this nesting stage. So I actually have more energy when it comes to all of the things on my to-do list. So when I lay down at night, sometimes my head is still racing with things that I wanna do, or maybe I have time to take a nap in the middle of the day, and I can't because, again, my head is kind of spinning. So I don't know what it is about like the psyche, but when I have white noise, it really kind of helps me just shut my mind down and fall asleep and stay asleep. And this is also something that they recommend for using with your babies. Um, I'll talk about that maybe like in another video, but Moms on Call is a great resource if you just go to momsoncall.com and they talk about putting a white noise machine in with your baby. So I'll definitely be using this. We'll have it in my room um, for the length of time that we have Jolie in the bassinet in there. And then once we move her over to the nursery, I'll 
probably move this or maybe get a second one. Another nice thing too for sleeping, and this, I don't actually have an item, but is using spa music. Again, like I'm a little biased because I listened to it for over 10 years, but I have a particular Pandora station that if I really can't fall asleep, if I put that thing on, it just songs me out. So I will try to link up that Pandora station. Um, if not, I know there's a couple of specific uh, massage like CDs <laughs> that I used to buy, so I'm sure you can like find the downloadable version. So if I can find that, I'll link that up in the description box below too. So I guess that technically was two things for sleeping. Um, but my last thing for helping you sleep is very much pregnancy related, and that is a pregnancy pillow. And there's a couple of different types of pillows out there. I'm actually gonna be doing a pillow review and how-to video right after this one, so I'm not gonna spend too much time in this video talking about that. But there's the specific one that I like, which is the big one, it's the big U-shaped one. And I have to tell you, like I am sleeping surprisingly well for being like 33, 34 weeks now. I really like it for a couple of reasons. One is because it is so big, you have a lot of support on either side of your body. So typically when I go to sleep, I lay down on one side, I nestle myself in. It supports me in so many different areas, everything from my ankle to my knee, um, which when you elevate your knee, it supports your hips, it helps support my rib cage, and then it leaves a great space for my arms. So I definitely, definitely recommend a pregnancy pillow. They are big, they take up a lot of the bed, so some husbands complain about it. Right now, top priority is you and getting your rest. Even though they're so big, they fold up pretty well and will store really well. And again, even though you're only using it for a smaller amount of time, it's worth every penny. I don't even think they're that expensive. I think you can get them for between 30 and $50 or something like that. So again, if you're interested in learning more about the pregnancy pillow, make sure you watch my next video. A couple more things on my must-haves for third trimester. I'm gonna talk to you real quick about this herbal tea. It's called Organic Third Trimester Tea and has a lot of great stuff in here. It has red raspberry, stinging nettle, oat straw, spearmint, rosehip chamomile, and alfalfa. And as again, some of you guys know, I had a career as a massage therapist and then as a health and life coach. So a lot of these ingredients you can look up yourself. I'm not gonna spend too much time in this video going through, but I can tell you a couple of things. Um, number one, red raspberry is very well known for pregnancy, especially in that third trimester alone. I just like that it comes in this blend, and I like that this blend has spearmint in it. So it really just tastes like spearmint tea to me, which I really enjoy the taste of. So um, even if you aren't sure about the benefits or if you exactly need this, it's just a really great tasting tea, and I think one of the important things to talk about here too for staying healthy during your third trimester is just staying hydrated. And I don't know about you, comment below if you can relate to this, but being so big right now, I've actually lost my appetite. Um, it's hard for me to sometimes get a lot of liquids in because I just feel so big and like, blah, I guess. So it's nice to have something flavored that I really enjoy that gets me to drink more liquids. I often just brew a cup and then throw it over ice and a little bit of extra stevia and it just makes really yummy tea. But going back to the red raspberry, red raspberry is known to help with um, contractions when you're actually in labor. Again, I'm having a C-section, so that doesn't matter to me, but it's supposed to also help too with your placenta and anything that has to do with the blood. So even um, having less bleeding after you deliver, it's really supposed to like kind of prime your uterus for delivery. And then of course all of these other good things you can look up. I started using it because I started getting leg cramps just a couple of weeks ago. And it actually says specifically on here something about leg cramps. I had one huge one and then the next day I started this tea. And then I have had two like kind of little half ones, but I also wasn't consistently taking this. So since those two little ones occurred, I was like, okay, Sarah, like take your tea every single day. So since then, I've been having a cup every single day. So yeah, check that out. Next, I wanna to talk to you about my skin routine. And I'm a huge fan of these three products that are part of my skin routine. Let me just show you my stomach real quick because I feel like for having gone through most of this pregnancy in winter, we got pregnant in October, and it's really only just now getting nice out. Um, my skin is glowing. I have no stretch marks. And I'm sure like 
Some of that is genetic, but I'm very fortunate that I have no stretch marks and I would like to contribute it to some of these products that I'm gonna show you. So I already took my hip thing off. But, this is my baby girl. I do, I don't even know if you can see it. I do have some stretch marks on my hips from when I was a teenager, but they have not gotten any darker or spread. But like, I have literally nothing, no stretch marks there. So for being, again, 34-ish weeks, I'm pretty happy with that. So this is like a three-part thing. The first thing that I use is a body scrub. And I just keep this jar in my shower and I use it probably once or twice a week. Something about pregnancy and your belly stretching, your stomach can get really itchy and this body scrub helps to exfoliate all of the dead skin, but it also has moisturizing properties in it. So this isn't any like major trick. This is no particular brand. Um, I will link this one up because it smells so good. It's mocha and coffee bean. And they have like, I think a mango one and a couple of other really good smells. But yeah, I just use a body scrub once or twice a week. And then every night before bed, what I put on is a body oil, and it's a specific one that's supposed to help with scarring, stretch marks, uneven tone, aging and dehydrated skin. And so I really like this. Another mom recommended this one to me. And in fact, actually she gave me this bottle. And it's an oil I would normally be concerned because again, like I've worked with massage oil and stuff that it would be like staining my clothes or my sheets or something. It doesn't, it actually absorbs into your body really, really well. Of course, there's a little bit of residue compared to if you were using a lotion, um, but it does definitely absorb in really nice and I have no stains on my sheets or my, or my pregnancy pillow or my clothes or anything. So you definitely could put it on in the middle of the day or in the morning too. But what I like to do in my morning routine is some good old cocoa butter but this one is specific for stretch marks and it actually even has this picture of a pregnancy woman on it it's paraben free and it has collagen and elastin and shea butter in it, it smells really good and it's easy to put all over my body when I'm applying these products I put it of course on my chest um, on my stomach, but I also get down into that hip area and then even into my lower back because I figure like all that stuff is stretching out. So those are the three things that I put on my body for helping with stretch marks. And I think even too, it's worth saying that just taking some time out to kind of like love upon yourself and um, take care of yourself in that way, taking a couple extra minutes in the shower to exfoliate or to apply lotion afterwards. I feel like it's a self-care thing, which is definitely important, um, especially if you're a pregnant mom and have children at home that are kind of running around just to take those extra couple of minutes to yourself is really important. So by having these things in stock, it kind of like forces you, it's kind of like having skin in the game. You invested the few bucks into these things, so it kind of forces you to actually like take the time to do that. So I have one more thing on my must have for third trimester and it's more for baby actually and it's this specific earbud that's made for playing music to your baby. So I actually got this when I was pregnant with Davin and no actually I didn't get this. I had like big headphones that I would try to wrap around my stomach and slowly but surely I was trying to stretch them more. Um, but I loved playing music to Davin. There's a lot of science behind babies starting to assimilate the systematic notes and everything that are in like, I'm talking about like classical music and jazz music. There's actually an app that I subscribe to called Neural, which again, I'll link up for you below. They have like a whole video explaining like the whole thing about playing music to your baby. Sometimes I'll also play worship music too. I did for Davin and what I'm doing for Jolie. A friend of mine recommended doing that just because it's something that I'm going to be playing in the house regularly so she'll kind of be used to hearing those particular songs and she did it for her son and said that it totally calms him down every time she puts worship music on because he was used to listening it to the womb. It's kind of the same concept of that sound machine um, with the white noise. Babies like it because it sounds like the blood flow and your heartbeat and everything that they're used to hearing in the womb. So. I've been playing classical and jazz and worship music too, usually using this little headphone. Um, it's a lot cheaper than some of the other ones that I've found. It's just a single one, which I was disappointed with when I first got it because the more expensive ones have like this sticky thing to stick to your belly and it comes with two, but this one cranks out <laughs> some pretty loud noise. I actually have to turn it down sometimes. Usually what I'll do is I'll plug it into my phone and turn on the Neural app or 
you know, the worship music or whatever while I'm laying on the couch watching TV again at night if I'm not using the massage gun or something. And um, I just tuck it in the band of my clothing. So if I'm wearing a dress, like I'll actually just put it down my shirt. Usually my shirts are snug enough for it to hold against the stomach. Um, or like I said, if I'm wearing like bottoms, you just kind of tuck it into the band of my stomach. Anything that it just puts it right up against your belly so that the baby can hear it. And I did start this in my third trimester. Babies can start hearing before that, but just for it to get sound through my belly to them, that's when I started doing this. And it also gives me re reassurance too, again, like talking about my health, just knowing that like, I don't know, I feel like there's not a lot I can do for her right now. So if science is true about playing the music, then at least it's something good that I'm doing for her. So again, everything is linked up in the description box below. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the little notification bell because I'm gonna be uploading the how to use the pregnancy pillow and I go into a lot more detail and actually show myself using it. So if you're getting a pregnancy pillow or interested in that, make sure you check out that video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really supports my channel. Leave me some comments. I love talking with you guys and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.